This week, Zach Moody from AVX Corporation joins us for an interview on the rise of insider threat post-COVID-19. Next up, Juliet Akafor joins us for an interview on why user adoption in enterprise security is low. In the enterprise security news, funding announcements from ClearSense, Morphosec, Feedzai, 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 Humio, Catch Living Security, Productive, and SoCure. ServiceNow acquires IntelliBot, Accenture acquires Signy, Astadia acquires Anubex, AutoRabbit acquires CodeScan, Kroll acquires RedScan, a lot of scan companies, uh, Grimm. And product news uh, or community news is launching a private vulnerability disclosure program. Attack IQ is automating the validation of AI and ML. Circle CI offers CICD for ARM in the cloud. Elastic observability updates. Gigamon and FireEye collaborate on the integration of Gigamon Hawk. McAfee unveils MVision Cloud. Red Hat OpenShift is available on AWS. Sysdig adds unified threat detection across containers and cloud. And even more than that, so stay tuned for this episode of Enterprise Security Weekly. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where we talk security vendors and aren't afraid to name names. It's Enterprise Security Weekly. When it comes to web app and API security, the choice is simple. You can choose Fastly's security solution that teams will actually use in full blocking mode, just like 90% of their customers. Or you can stick with costly options that you probably just turn off. You can get Fastly's all-in-one platform that protects apps everywhere they live, however they're built. Or departments can agree to disagree. You can go to securityweekly.com forward slash Fastly to learn more. Or you can just wish you had. JumpCloud offers a cloud directory platform that gives users a single identity for their email, apps, network, and work device. Whether Mac, Windows, or Linux, JumpCloud gives IT admins a single pane of glass to configure and secure those devices. With JumpCloud, remote onboarding and offboarding goes from hours to under five minutes and puts zero trust security within reach for organizations of any size. Looking for a directory that supports heterogeneous OSs or you need just SSO, MDM, LDAP, or MFA? Jump Cloud will make your job easier. Try it out for yourself at securityweekly.com forward slash jump cloud. Welcome everyone to Enterprise Security Weekly, episode number 222 for March 31st, 2021. I'm your host, Paul Astadornian, joined remotely by Adrian Sanabria. Welcome, Adrian. Hey, thanks. Looking forward to all our conversations today and, and the news segment, and we got some great guests. Let's go. Got a good show. Tyler Shields is here to help us with that as well. Tyler, welcome. Thank you so much. Episode 222 today. I'm excited by that number because two is my favorite number. There you go. And you get three of them. Uh, If you want to stay in the loop, all things Security Weekly, if so, make sure you visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe. You can subscribe to all of our shows across the network via your favorite podcast catcher or via our YouTube channel. Sign up for our mailing list and sign up for our Discord server Follow us on our newest streaming platform. Yes, that's right. We are on Twitch. Uh, joining us today is Zach Moody. Welcome him back to the show. He's the head of global cybersecurity and privacy at AVX Corporation here to talk about insider threat in the wake of COVID-19. Zach, welcome back to the show. What's up, Paul? Happy to be back. Hey, Always good, good to, to have be on you. the show. Yeah, it's awesome to have you back on the show. So we're talking... Uh, COVID-19 in the the ever-changing landscape. I think for, I can't count how many episodes in a row we had to mention that now everyone's working from home in the pandemic. And we had to talk about security challenges when working from home. But now yep. things are loosened up a little bit and we're kind of going back to normal. Is that kind of your, your angle that we're going to have to do another shift? Yeah, and I, and I hate, believe me, I hate bringing up, you know, topic of discussion that's been talked on and talked on and talked on. But uh, you know, I've been asked this question over the past few weeks, um, and, and it is starting to, it, it kind of rang, rang some thoughts in my head. But, um, you know, I believe there's a greater threat coming out of COVID-19 than there was going into it. Um, because if you think everybody's been working from home or remote somewhere, uh, and they're traveling about, um, and they've had access to your data for, for the past year. 
right? Whether they took computers home, established them at home, or they were working from a, you know from their own personal computers, uh, or you have web-based applications, cloud-based applications. Um, however, that may be, they've had some sort of access to your data, um, and now that they're coming out of COVID nineteen, and corporations are bringing uh, people back to the office, you know, I, I feel like there's going to be a greater risk. Uh, and one case in particular is you're going to have a lot of people who don't want to come back to the office, right? You're going to have a lot of disgruntled employees or who do not agree with the political piece of, of the transition. And so that creates risk. Um, and again, um, you know, the risk, the risk is great. Um, and I, I chose this topic because there's a plethora of, of avenues to go down. Um, and I think it's going to be some great discussion amongst the crew that we have today. Um, and so, if, you know, data is what, adversaries are trying to get to, um, whether that's the means of uh, coming in through a phishing attack, you know, and dropping a malware uh, into your organization. Um, and so you also have the, the risk of, you know, uh, machines that have been exposed to uh, rogue networks uh, remotely or outside of your enterprise. Now that you're bringing them back into the office, you know, what does that process look like? Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, you know, those are just several, several topics of discussion that I think will, will lead to a good a good one. So. People might be more comfortable now uh, traveling a little bit, going to a local coffee shop. You know, you've been cooped up for a year. You were, you know, Tony Stark in the cave for a while. Now it's time to come <laughs> out with all your new shiny, shiny armor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Except it's not great armor. It was good armor when you're in the cave, but not when you're out. Uh, and right. that could that could pose some challenges, right? Yep. And so what I've always said is, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, the greatest threat is, and again, you know, not one size fits all right um, when it comes to security programs, but I will say that I think the majority of what adversaries are after is data, right? Um, I mean, there's always um, sabotage, corporate sabotage, or, or just uh, being malicious in nature, you know, uh, with ransomware, uh, holding your stuff ransom, but in making a statement, right? But data is ultimately what adversaries are trying to get to, especially in the rise of intellectual property theft. Um, you know, with, with some of the, the uh, nation state actors out there. Um, but the way that they get to the data is through some of these other vectors, right? Whether it's the malware, uh, and a lot of malware is dropped through phishing. So phishing still, to me, remains number one, um, especially, especially at AVX uh, and, and manufacturing. Um, and so, again, there, there's, there's a whole uh, list of things that, that, that should be discussed when, when talking about how we're going to do this transition back to the office. And wherever the data is, it doesn't matter, right? It's protecting the data. So can we can we rest, start with like moving. not posting your vaccine card online? Because I I tried to tell people to do that, and now I still see people doing that. And I'm like, I understand like you got your thumb over your birth date, but like now I know your name and what vaccine you got and what lot yep. number it was. So now I'm just going to email you or call you, and with that information is that's more than enough. <laughs> I think people common, with a lot less information than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the common person is going to look at that and say, "Well, you can't, you know, you can't copy that. I, mean, I got my thumb over. It. There's no right. way you can reproduce it." Well, what you're saying is a totally different angle than just reproducing the card, right? Yeah, for me, it was never about like fishing. Yeah, it wasn't about reproducing uh, the card. It was information yeah. used for fishing. Right, right. So I mean, it's, it's again, it's this is training, right? Training the common. Uh, the common person or, or the people who are not in security. So having a good security awareness program uh, is a, is a big key item for me as well. Um, and so that's a continuous, ed continuous education is always going to be uh, top of mind, uh, especially in so today's on, world. On, on that point, what kind of um, back to work types of scams do you think we'll see? You know, like, uh, you know, I could think of, uh, you know, a lot of welcome back to the office phishing emails, yep. you know, so, something along those lines. What do, yeah, what do you absolutely. think we'll see there? And if you think about phishing campaigns, you know, and doing them internally, uh, you know, a lot of people, <clears throat> especially at the very beginning stages of, of running a security uh, awareness program in a, in a corporate or an enterprise uh, at an enterprise level, you know, some of the first responses you get is like, well, why do we care about you know, automatic responses, right? Until you actually show them that some of these automatic responses tell you one, what their signature looks like, especially if they're an executive mm -hmm. uh, uh, assistant, right? What their signature looks like because it's not a default uh, standardized uh, signature. Um, 
And then it also says, well, you know, if, if you need uh, support with operations, contact this person. You need, if you need support with financial stuff, you know, contact this person yeah. while I'm out of the office. Well, now I've here, got a here are the dates more I'm gonna personalized be greeting that I can construct, right? Mm. Yeah, and, so, and specific dates that you're going to be out of the office, all, all those details. Yeah, and so these are things; these are details that only somebody that sits in that position would know. But if you're telling, if if that's an automated response, and I'm and I'm an attacker, right? And I fish you. Now I have that where I can start to, um, you know, position myself as that person. Right. And play off the psychological uh, piece of the or element of that person. Zach, do you think COVID distracted us from some other things in cybersecurity? I think that both previous and current administrations had to put some effort into, you know, dealing with lots of different things that were not cybersecurity. Trying to say without being, you know, any leaning in any direction politically here in the U.S. is, is a slippery slope for sure. Um, but in, I think we're in a position where we haven't had that focus on it, which puts us at a disadvantage. And now with everyone, you know, going back to the office or working from home, it it almost doesn't matter. I think we're at a disadvantage from a cybersecurity perspective from a nation state. And I say that because I want to get your perspective because I know you just did a panel on nation state sponsored espionage. (laughs) Yeah. So again, you may have to re-ask that question to me, Paul, because my mind started to go somewhere else, and 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 that's okay. I, one Where'd it thing go? Can we go wanna, there? Where'd your mind go? Anything good? Like well, that's like well, parasailing I mean, well, or, that's where, or that's where I'm going. Okay, I'm rock going where my mind is. <laughs> okay, go go where you want to <laughs> go, Zach. <laughs> that, that can be a slippery slope in itself, right? <laughs> but <clears throat> but you know, a lot of people were so concerned about uh, you know when COVID nineteen first hit, they're so concerned about oh man. We have to send people home. We got to ensure we have VPN. We've got encryption. We've got you know, uh, you know, all those details, right? And we're going to send people to these foreign places that we have no idea. Uh, they say they're going to work from. And we're going to let them work. But now everybody's excited. Hey, we've got vaccinations, right? We've got. We're going to come back and we're going to re-energize this company and bring people back into the buildings that we've been paying a lot of money for. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they're not so concerned anymore. The excitement's overtaking that. And I think that's another risk is that they're going to rush this, uh, instead of taking their time, uh, like they did beforehand. And so they're going to miss some of these minor details. I think will end up biting us. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why, but you, you know, when you mentioned coming back to the office, uh, you, one of the places my mind went was that, uh, scene in Austin powers where they're dethawing him. And he's going through yeah. this whole process where they're like, you know, he's getting yeah. a hot shave, he's getting getting uh, teeth brushed and and all that. And, you know, I, I don't know, that that just connected my mind with people coming back into the office and like right where you entered the building, I'm thinking, you know, they're going to, there's going to be like a decontamination station for your, whatever equipment yeah. you took home for, for the pandemic, you know, and then while you're waiting on that, you can get a hot shave, you can get a haircut, something like that. <laughs> There there, nice, yeah, cookies actually. and milk, cookies and milk at the door with some balloons. That's how yeah. I would do it, right? Yeah, that's why you should do it. That's that's um, what you got at the uh, at the studios up there, right, Paul? Every yes. time you come in, you get that hot shower, hot shave, everything. Cookies, milk, yeah. Cookies, milk. I yep. mean, except we don't have a shower here, so you just use your imagination. It's like a bird bath. Right? It's it's more like a sponge bath, it's, Tyler. You'll see when you get here. <laughs> okay, more like, more like a, a moist towelette. Yes, yes. I'm I'm glad I've worked remote as a co-host. <laughs> That's the thing. Like if people want to go back into the office. How does I mean? How does that tie into you know into security? Because now you're gonna have a hybrid. It's like basically you've got to be able to deal with everyone working from home, everyone in the office in all combinations in between. Maybe people are working at like a WeWork space, maybe half your workforce is back at the office one week and then the other half goes in the other week. Like I've seen models like that. Uh, Maybe some employees work two days in the office, but three days at home, you know, or one day at a WeWork. It's like, oh my God, we've got to protect these users regardless of where they are because they're going to be all over the place for a long time. not only that, I mean, all the energy that goes into trying to schedule that yeah. that crap. I mean, put yeah. it towards something yeah. that's going to be more useful. 
It's funny you bring that up. I got pitched early on in COVID. I got pitched by a young startup that had the idea of creating a, a, a scheduling app for your office. So you could set it and say the number of headcount you would allow in and different divisions, et cetera, et cetera. And people would say, I need to come in this day or that day. And it would help you with do all of the scheduling during COVID. And I was like, well, that's great. But, you know, if and when we ever solve this problem, will we need this service conti- to continue? So, you know, they need to pivot into podcast scheduling software. That's what they need to pivot into. I'll there be their can first customer. <laughs> can't you do that with like Google calendars or something like team calendars? Well, active, like if you know you have space for 10 people and, you know, you need two people from customer success and one from sales and one from whatever, uh, I like the it. scheduling right. of who wants to come in on what days gets rather complex. Uh, needless yeah. to say, I didn't invest in it, mm. but it, you know, it was interesting nonetheless. Yeah. Hey, Paul, what was, uh, going back to your question about the, uh, nation state actors? What was oh, that? I don't know. I, it was a really bad question, Zach, admittedly. <laughs> well, apparently, apparently, it's to retract that question. Pull it back. Well, I mean, it's an interesting point because I, I did do a, I did do a, uh, a discussion on that, uh, recently. Mm. Um, and, um, it, it, it also brings to light some of the challenges because some, some, you know, for us, I mean, we're a global corporation, you know, uh, 19 different countries. Uh, we, we do operations in a lot of risky areas. Uh, those people are going remote, you mm-hmm. know, they went home and remote. Uh, and some people are maybe even traveling while they've been working remote. Uh, you know, for instance, if somebody has, has parents that need to get back to their homeland or their, maybe escorting them back home, you know, what are they taking with them? You know, are we, are we really, do we really know where our data is? Yeah. That's, that's what it comes down to. I mean, that's a good point. Does it, now that we're trying to reintegrate uh, post COVID, how does the uh, kind of uh, threat landscape look like in terms of preventing espionage where, like you said, they might be traveling, but now there's restrictions. I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for phishing and other attacks based on, you know, what you might have to do if you want to come back into the office. You know, Tyler, you mentioned scheduling. That's an opportunity for an email phishing. Like, hey, oh, click here to schedule your time back in the office, right? And I think it brings up also other avenues for espionage. Well, yeah, and also think about the lack thereof, uh, you know, or the lack of security um, or just the lack of attention to detail is what I like to say. Because uh, we had operations that were either you know, facilities that had to operate at 20% capacity, 0%, you know, depending on that country's regulation, right, on COVID. That, that's tough, right? And, and, and God bless our COO, you know, during that time, because I know that had to be, that's a pain, that was a painful time uh, to, to navigate. But, but also think about third-party services or, or people who were maybe pretending to be service providers going into the facilities when it's only maybe 10% or 20% um, you know, capacity. You know, who's paying attention to that? Do we mm-hmm. have all the right people there? Yeah, did we put um, all our, so our countermeasures in place in our physical facilities yeah. to handle that reduce? I mean, on one hand, I believe that perhaps a reduced workforce back in the office might be easier to protect. However, if your security guards and other measures are also to reduce capacity, you might be you might be limited. Correct. And, and again, I'm you know these are these are, this is food for thought, obviously. Mm. Um, but but these are things that we have to you know take in consideration. Um, so so again, yeah, it goes back to just knowing where your data is, knowing uh, you know uh, what's what's what does right look like on your network, um, and really siloing and 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 what I call zoning zoning your networks based on your classifications. So what we need is zero trust with SD-WAN and SASE in a cloud native environment. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of buzzwords right there. Wait, Layer and some XDR. XDR. And some XDR. XDR. XDR to monitor it all. It. Sorry, Adrian, you had a real U- question. UBEA, something like that. <laughs> Hey, we talked about the new the new one, C19, right? It's new, that's the that's new, the new thing, C19. <laughs> I thought that's the new Chinese threat actor group. Oh, wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, another consideration that occurred to me, you know, is just some of the physical stuff, like when to have people physically go back to offices, if you're a large company with a lot of branch offices, maybe an international company, uh, corporation, because the, the vaccine schedules are all different by state, by country, you know, like, like, uh, some are way behind others, you know, so, 
I, I would imagine it would be tough to do uh, you have any kind of we're all back to the office at once. It'd be more of a rolling thing, I would guess, for for most companies based on on the you know the state of vaccination and their uh, and, and also the rules in their particular country or state. And then crossing borders, you know, the rules there might, you know, might have changed. Uh, for, hey, for maybe some that's where I, I clone your vaccination card, Adrian, and I show up to your physical place of work and go like, hey, I'm Adrian. I'm vaccinated. You should let me in. And then I work for like a week in, in your office with you. This th- this card? Yeah. <laughs> you just got you just to gotta invite him to the studio, Paul, and hand him a Bloody Mary like what you got. I do. I, mean, I have a Bloody Mary. It's wait, very good. No, I, I, yeah. I mean... I wish I had one. I wish you sent me one for remote. I just you wish know? all you guys were like here, right? I know. Right? <laughs> we'll work on that. That's actually not a bad idea. So th- there, there are but, services. But you know, you would have his fingerprints too. Sending cocktails remote mm. now. Really? You know. <laughs> um, but has anybody else thought about too? And this is something that is hitting close to home. Uh, and if it's not hitting close to home to you, I think it will be soon enough. Um, especially, you know, being in South Carolina. Uh, you know, we're not San Francisco. We're not in New York. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, we don't have the, the, you know, we are close to Atlanta and close to Charlotte, but, but again, think about pulling on the cybersecurity side and, and the professionals that we have and what we do. I mean, 200% of what I do and my team does can be done anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. Right. It, we don't touch, you know, we don't really touch the, the infrastructure. Um, you know, we, we protect it, you know, we advise it. Um, and, um, and so sending, sending guys like, you know, your sock or having your sock work home from home, uh, for an extended period of time, and then trying to force them to come back to the office when they probably get their best work done from home. Uh, you know, you're going to start losing people. Uh, it's going to be very hard to keep good talent. Uh, and if companies take the stance of, uh, one, you know, one, you know, stroke of a brush, you know, for everybody, uh, it, it's going to be very hard to, to keep good professionals when they can really just get a job from anywhere. Right. And so we're seeing a lot more of those pop up, uh, remote jobs for, you know, cybersecurity, it can be done from anywhere and it makes sense, but you know, our corporate, our corporation is really going to say, you know, well, fair is fair. You know, if one person is going to be here, everybody's got to be. Yeah, I, 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 I what, the thing what of, a ridiculous thing to say, you know, like it should be based on, you know, your, your, your job needs, you know, your performance, things like that, you know, to, to say that this one rule applies to everybody, regardless of, of what their job is or, or what their needs are as an employee. But I think it's this just, chaos uh, makes us makes us more vulnerable because you have companies that are in the big cities that are like, oh, man, I want to get out of the big city. You know, Los Angeles, yeah. I think, is one of those places, right? Seen a lot of people moving to Texas from also San, San Francisco. Francisco. Oh, yep. yeah, coming from from uh, San Francisco also. Because the yeah, larger the cities had to lock down more because they were densely populated to try and, you know, overcome that. Um, and so that puts them in a, a really tricky economic position. Now people are leaving. And then, Zach, your point of, like, well, do you work from home? And if you're in a big city and you're an employee and you want to move out of that big city, you're going somewhere else. You're going to go with someone who is working from home. I guess the point is all this creates chaos and amidst all that chaos uh, is when attackers like to strike. I mean, most of us have done, you know, offensive uh, security testing, right? Those sometimes you create chaos just to get your attack to go off more smoothly. In the military, they call it psyops, right? With a P Uh, is psychological warfare. I mean, they Mm -hmm. teach it It's a class. It's a job. It's a job description. And and it's every bit of what the enemy does uh, and and the criminals, right? Um, Well, I mean, and we do it too. We do it too. (laughs) Well, correct. It's a level. I think it's a pretty, you know, level playing. The tactics aren't, aren't necessarily secret, right? I mean, you want to disrupt the enemy with cyber operations and physical operations. And I know we don't want to talk about profiling people and stuff, you know, until you need somebody profiled, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's all always a, a tough, tough subject, you know, and it's a slippery slope sometimes. But, but again, in, in security, I mean, you have to, uh, you know, use your behavior, right? You, you eba, whatever you want to call, call it. Um, you know, you have to, you have to have some sort of decision tree or decision matrix that says, hey, uh, with a risk goal, right? says hey these types of activities equal this you know this uh this action right and this is a risk of 
you know, on a scale from one to 10, right? And then that's, those are the types of decision trees that you build out with AI or machine learning. And a lot of people get scared um, that those types of systems are making decisions for us and for humans. And it's not true. It's actually, uh, they're actually taking raw data and real data um, and, and they're actually bringing things to light um, and, and shedding light on things a lot sooner and a lot quicker uh, to your SOC analyst um, and for them to make the decision, right? That, same, that saves time, reduces your exposure, uh, your time to exposure. Um, and that's your overall uh, you know, risk. But um, see, again, there's another, another slope we can go down. But, um, you know, I, I definitely think that, uh, you know, I won't necessarily call it profiling, but these are, these are types of characteristics that you have to have or you're not going to be successful. Mm. No, agreed. And it's hard to profile when people are, are moving around, like we've said, right? Maybe they're working from home, but then they're traveling and then they're working in the office. I mean, I think we we always had that. I think we're going to have a lot more of that, and that can make it even more difficult to build that profile, right? Yeah, I mean, and again, I always like to say and joke around that I'm a good pin cushion, right? And I think as a sister, you have to be. Um, uh, not that you just need to take take the stones thrown and and just just uh, just deal with it, but. Uh, you have to understand that, uh, you know, changing a culture is like turning the Titanic sometimes, you know, and um, it's not easy uh, and it can wear you out, quite frankly, but uh, you have to keep pushing, pushing people. And so, you know, you're going to have these events where it's like, well, hey, uh, you know, you could have these automated rules where it's like, hey, you're, you're there's some some suspicious activity around your account. So we we've, you know, we've blocked your access, you know, and so it's better to block and ask the questions and fix it right then, then sometimes necessarily let it go and then ask the questions as it's going along because then again it could be too late yeah and, and knowing when to block and knowing when to challenge for more uh identifying information or proof that you are who you are or when to just alert and have someone look into it more i think that's where we get into some really difficult decisions but again, I mean I think we have to challenge ourselves to to really understand our data. Um, because again, I, I'm a big proponent of, uh, you know, the technology that was created 30 years ago is still the same technology, right? We've just put lipstick on the pig, right? And we've we've we have tools and buzzwords out there that make our makes our jobs easier, maybe uh, probably more complicated, which is not a good thing. But uh, but again, a packet, a log, you know, an IP, an octet, all that stuff is still the same as as it was when it was created, and so. There's some basic fundamentals I think we need to challenge ourselves to to really hone in on and say, hey, there there are some activity right that without with an absolute surety that that this is this is criminal activity right and I think we have to start with those those foundational things and go back to the basics. Absolutely. Well, Zach, it was awesome having you on the show. And is our time up already? It is up already. This is only thirty minutes. You'll have to come on on uh, come on one of our other shows. We'll have a longer yeah, conversation, to, especially the uh, you know the M and A section that you got coming up. It'd be great. Yeah. You want? Well, we got to do another guest after this, but yeah, we'll we'll have you back at some point. Love to have you back on the show. Yeah, I mean, I, I love you guys. Uh, always appreciate being on the on the um, on the show. Thanks so much, Zach. We love you too, man. Hey, with that, we're going to take a quick break and come back with Juliet Akafor coming up next. Yes. 